Yo, what is up, everybody? It is shooting the shit uncensored special episode edition on a Saturday, 11 a.m. Australian time, 9 p.m. USA Eastern. We're sitting back. I'm chilling out with my boy Boogaloo. And uh, you know what it is? It's shooting the shit uncensored, baby. I am your host, the bald, the beard, the beautiful Piers Austin. And today I'm joined by my special co host for today, the bald, the not so beautiful Boogaloo. What's up, brother? Thanks for joining. I like to consider myself regularly handsome, but thank you for having me on. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a pleasure, man. We have a very special guest, as everyone knows, for the month of June uh, on Shooting the Shit Uncensored. We're doing Women in Wrestling Month, where we're going to bring on women that have uh, contributed to the world of professional wrestling in some, any, or any type of capacity. Uh, you know, I really wanted to sort of uh, bring light, extra light to women's wrestling. I'm a huge fan of, of what's going on on the product today and also paying respect to uh, women who are passing the business like our guest tonight, Ms. Foxy Foxy. But before we get into that, we got to get into some thanking some sponsors. First up, let's go, is healthvape.com. Now, let me tell you something a little bit about Health Vape. Now, these guys sell healthy vaping alternatives. All products are no nicotine, no harmful or addictive chemicals, and they are vitamin f- infused. Bro, you know I vape my little fucking Australian ass off all the time. I've got some of this stuff coming in, man. I'm really excited. If you want to get your hands on some of these amazing products, uh, you know, type in MWA pod to get a 10% discount. Yeah, you can't Next, beat that, right? Oh, bro, you can't beat that. And next up, we got Sleefs.com. Now, with Sleefs.com, if you or anyone in your family is an athlete, you need to check out this website. They sell arm sleeves, knee sleeves, compression pants, compression shorts, compression socks, tights, joggers, even dirty fucking boxes, Boogaloo. As I, I said, if you I have a someone, pair. I have a dude. pair of dirty box. Yes, I do. Matter of um, fact, I, I warm this morning out to get the mail in front of the house. And I got whoa, some, some couple of ladies who were beeping the horns at me, so I, it's doing the job. Hey man, I just had my third. Ba- I just had my third kid, me and uh, Mrs. Austin, bro. So I'm scared to wear dirty boxes, man. She doesn't, uh, you know, <clears throat> she 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 likes the uh, the bald, the beard, the beautiful pierce. But uh, man, the dirty boxes might tip her over the edge. So I got to be careful yeah. with that shit, bro. Yeah, man. But, man, Knights of the Gimmick Table, you know, you guys are doing some great things uh, on the MWA Podcast Network where you can find Knights of the Gimmick Table every Sunday, 9 p.m. USA Eastern, 11 a.m. Monday mornings here in Australia. And, uh, man, you guys have been doing some great things. The the fans are and viewers are absolutely going crazy about your show, bro. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Well, it's all thanks to you and Angel. If, if you didn't give me this – you guys didn't give me this platform, I don't know what I've been doing. But it's uh, completely grateful and humble. Thank you. Nah, man, it, it's a pleasure to have you, bro. You guys are doing great things, you and Chung, mm-hmm. a.k.a. Lowrider. But, guys, without further ado, I'm going to bring in my guest, Ms. Foxy, Foxy, Foxy. Welcome to Shooting the Shit. How you doing? I am good. Uh, my mic just went out, so hopefully you guys can still hear me. Yeah, we hear you. Yeah, we, we hear you. We hear you perfectly fine. You good. know, Pierce, I got to tell you, this is the one that got away, you know. <laughs> I, oh, I, I love oh. the word. I love the word all my heart, and my old tag team partner stole her from me. Ah, so you <laughs> loved her it. first, man. They I should write a song first. about yeah, that. I, I should have, you know, I should have, I should have, you know, shot my shot, but I didn't. You man. know, though, fun you fact: you lose. <laughs> on a technicality, on a technicality, I knew you before Damien. I know. Be- I know. Do you? Yeah. I saw your sexy ass on a. Certain MTV. Oh yeah. Thing. <laughs> and I'm like, huh. So oh, technically, yeah. I knew of Boogaloo Lou before I even met him, and I am not even gonna lie because when Damien had told me that he was he tagged with you back when we first started dating, might have marked out a little bit. I'm like, oh, I know man. that guy. So I don't. Well, he doesn't know me, but I know him. <laughs> oh yeah, you got my eye, lady. You got my eye. <laughs> <laughs> So how did you originally break into the business, Foxy? Uh, By accident. (laughs) No, uh, back back in the late 90s, like, there was no internet. Or you had to be, like, super, you know, bougie and rich to have internet in your house. So I'd always wanted to do it. 
but it was like, where the fuck do I even find a school? How is this a thing? How do these people figure this out? And my dad had bought tickets for an indie wrestling show in the area because, you know, during the Attitude Era and all that shit, indie wrestling was yeah. hot. So he had bought tickets for the show and inside the flyer for the program was a thing for the school. I'm like, yeah, I get to start training now. So I convinced my parents to let me do wrestling training throughout my senior year since I had zero plans to go to college. <laughs> and they're, they always knew, I was like, wanted to do this and be Miss Elizabeth and all that. So they're like, all right, wrestling training it is. And poof. So tiny did you want to? Did did you want to like perform in the ring, or were you wanting to be like a valet manager in that role? Um, I wanted to do what the ECW women did. I wanted to manage. I wanted to take bumps, and I wanted to get intensely involved. Like I, I'd go through a table in a heartbeat if I had the chance. But I didn't want to wrestle. That wasn't my thing. I didn't have a desire to actually get in the ring unless it was like, you know, storyline purposes. But mm. I never wanted to be a full-time or part-time wrestler. I was pressured into it back then because back in like 99, women's wrestling wasn't really a thing. And, you know, a lot of the matches were fluff, you know, the cat fights, the mm. evening go yeah. Is and the brawn panty shit, which I fucking despised because I was 18. And I'm like, I wasn't comfortable showing the goodies. But mm. occasionally they'd be like, okay, we want at least one women's match. And then there were so little and so few women that can do it. Like around Jersey, we had um little genie who went by Sweet Destiny. Yeah, and we had, nice. yeah, like there was a uh, at the time. Uh, I can't remember her name, but like there were like maybe four or five here in Jersey. Yeah. And they taught me the bare essentials of wrestling just so that I could at least put on a match. And oftentimes I didn't even get put with the trained female wrestlers. I would get put in the matches with girls that had little to no experience. So 18 year old green as grass trying to be the vet in the match one female I actually had to teach one move to prior to the match because she had zero wrestling experience, but they wanted a match. I'm like, cool. Uh, <laughs> that would be that would that'd be so difficult to do to get against someone who had like no training, and even like someone yourself who had, as you said, green as grass. Yeah. It, it and, and a lot of the times back then, too, um, they put us in intergender matches which back then I feel made sense because you would be, um, you'd partake in one of the loopholes, which was it's okay for a female and a male to fight if the f guy is gay or if he's like short and skinny. So like I worked against the uh, Christopher Street Connection once. Oh, good guys. <laughs> and you know, I worked a couple other guys too, which helps me a lot more because at that time I'm learning a little bit more just in case I needed to. The girls couldn't do it. I'm like, fuck. The guys can do this though. Mm. So I was actually able to have more matches against guys. Still didn't like wrestling because that wasn't my MO though, but I got pressured into it a lot. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, you you mentioned, you know, obviously the nineties, you know, with what women's wrestling was in, in 1999, a lot of, you know, bra and panty matches, <laughs> like evening gown stripping down matches <laughs> and stuff like that. Did you ever feel pressured <laughs> to put, be in those situations yourself? I was in several. The mm. first one I did. She worked. She worked for some sleazy ass promoters too, man. I did. I really did. Um, in the beginning, I was about just turned eighteen. Excuse me. <clears throat> just turned eighteen, and I was in a uh, feud with a girl named Tracy Taylor. <clears throat> I'm getting over a cold. I'm sorry. No, you're okay. And uh, our, I guess, send off match. It was supposed to be one-on-one because -on -one, we had already done miss him a mixed tag match and uh the promoter gino flipped the script on us he was like no we're gonna do an evening out match I'm like fuck because i had to lose yeah. which meant my clothes were coming off and uh i wasn't in shape back then 
But even that aside, <coughs> it was more a matter of I'm a girl. I'm not I'm not a woman. Mm. You know, and I was placed in a lot of uh situations where I had to be a woman at 18 and be sexual and be confident. And I'm like, I'm not there. I'm not there yet. I just just graduated high school. Barely had any boyfriends at the time. Mm. Not comfortable. Still a kid. Yeah. So yeah. it was uh that one broke me. The first time I did it, it broke me. Uh anytime after that when I did a bra and panties match, luckily I won. Those are my stipulations. I was like, if you want a bra and buy panties match with me or evening gown match, I'm not losing. Period. So I did one against a female named Luxurious Lynn, which went over really well. I didn't get down on anything. <clears throat> I had one, oh my God, I had one against Missy Hyatt. Oh, wow. Oh, really? Oh, my God, this one, this story. I was working for Jason Knight up in Connecticut. Get, get. And uh, her opponent didn't show. It was supposed to be Bobcat at the time. She no-showed. I remember like, Bobcat, the pussy that bites. <laughs> that, was, Jesus. That, was, that, was, that was her saying, though, right? Right, Prosty? That was the saying. Yeah, it was. Oh, wow. So, so Jason's like, look, there's there's no other girl on the card, but even if there was, you're the only one I know that could pull this off. And I I didn't know what became of Missy. So I'm like, what do you mean? I don't get it. And then she shows up. I'm like, oh, oh I get it. <clears throat> so... She tore up. Not only was she tore up, we got to the ring, and I'm the heel. Mm. And she does this whole thing where she gets in the mic and she's like, I forgot my panties. I'll be right back. She goes to the back, and the crowd's like, Yeah. Oh. She forgot her panties. <laughs> she really forgot her panties. No joke. <laughs> I'm in the ring with Joel Gertner. And I'm like, Does she really forget? He's like, Yeah, she fucking forgot. Her. I'm like, Oh my God. Took up at least 10 minutes for her to find panties to come back to the ring. At that time, oh. the crowd turned on her. They're like loving me. I'm like, oh, fucking hell, fucking hell. So I'm like trying to like roll them back up. It ain't working. She gets back in the ring. I'm like, I'm just ending this quick. So I took off her shit. I won. And right after that, like the Connecticut crowd started calling me the Hyatt killer. Because anytime I went to Connecticut, I was the Hyatt killer. That's cool. Years later, um, I was hanging out with my girlfriend, Becky, Becky Bayless. And she's on the phone with the guys from Connecticut, like Cabana and all them. Mm -hmm. And they're like, who are you hanging out with? We hear another voice. She's like, oh, that's my girl, Foxy. So they're like, hi, Keller. I'm like, oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> that's awesome, though. <coughs> Oof, God, sorry. No, that's okay. But, you know, looking back at, you know, how you were treated and forced into things, you know, if Foxy Foxy of today was to, you know, go back in time and see some of the things, how women were treated back then, how would you approach it now? Uh, it's hard to say because you have this, especially the women, back then, even a little bit now, you have this thing where it's like, if you say something, like, that you don't want to do, then... There's a good chance you're shit out of a booking. Mm -hmm. There's a good mm -hmm. chance you're shit out of a lot of bookings at she's that point. She's hard to work with. Yes, exactly. She's mm -hmm. a bitch. She's hard to work with. She's a rat. Mm -hmm. And then you're done. You don't get any bookings. So mm -hmm. back then, like, I pulled a little weight. Like I said, at that point, I'm like, look, I'll do it, but I'm not losing. Or, you know, little suggestions like, hey, why don't we, why don't we try this? But to say no... <laughs> and back then these were things expected of you as a female yeah. you know you were expected to wear the short tight clothing with a thong underneath you were expected to you know have a cat fight which i never minded those but you were expected to be a sexual object and again i didn't care back then i didn't mind that was the name of the game and now, different story. Like, now it's a matter of you can be a sexual object, but confident. And you can be sexual and show your sexuality without being slutty. Like, mm. 
it, it's, or, be, or, or being a size four or a size six as well. Yeah. Like, you, you know, pe- women have, have really sort of come into an empowerment and women yeah. in wrestling today where you're seeing women being looked at as the same level of performer as the male oh, yeah. counterparts, women, you know, main yeah. eventing WrestleMania, you know, you go back 10 years at, you know, maybe even say five to say five to 10 years, mm-hmm. a lot of people would have never seen that coming. And yeah. it's an amazing thing to the women today that have worked hard to be taken seriously as a performer. Yeah. And it's interesting, even brought up like the weight thing. Cause back then there were unspoken pressures, you know, you had to be, a size four or a size two you yeah, had to be yeah. thin you <laughs> yeah. know you know big asses weren't the thing back then you had to be thin or in shape and preferably blondes like i went blonde yeah. a lot for bookings i got like i got a i had a booking taken away from me <clears throat> because i dyed my hair pink from really blonde. they wanted they wanted a generic female to put with anything yeah. and i had long blonde hair at the time and it was great and i put like highlights <laughs> done <laughs> really you think that something like that would just add to making you more of a unique looking performer though right you know? hey when did you say you started around the time you, you just before you were 18 when did you start feeling comfortable with your like let's say uh, i guess with your sexuality yeah. and all that that you weren't because i you, from when I known you, even to now, you always been a confident woman, a strong woman. Yeah. Um. Honestly, I it didn't really start till twenty five. Yeah. Man. I was great at pretending. Like it okay. didn't. Like I didn't really own myself fully until after Damon and I had Seth. Like wow. at that point, it was like I'm I'm a woman, and it, it, that's. A, I went through the wrestling phase too of these guys need to stop treating me like I'm 17 because it, it's such a such a contrast because everybody that knew me knew me as a kid when I was 17 18 years old when I was 17 18 I had to be a woman I had to be treated like a woman and act like a woman but the minute I was they kept still seeing me as a kid so I started fighting back I'm like okay now I'm not a kid now give me the good spots give me Give me this. I'm I'm a woman now. Let's let's do this. And I had to break like so many stupid molds. Like I started doing like the sexy photo shoots, and like I dyed my hair blonde. And you know we did that controversial thing with uh, Scampia and YWC because it was like I'm not a girl. So please let's start acting like I'm my age. So yeah. What was it? Do you think that they wanted you to keep acting like a child? Like, was it the, for a character aspect, or do you think it was more of like something a little bit more sinister than that? A part of me wants to think that since a lot of people saw me growing up in wrestling, you know, it's that parent mentality you still see. Your kid is a little kid, you know. You don't want to really see them grow up. On the other side, they probably just really liked the whole idea that I was, you know. Uh, statutory. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's some sick fucks out there, and yeah, the yeah. wrestling the the wrestling world has definitely uh, had a few of them in between, <laughs> you know, over the years, you know. So yeah, I just saw but, one on uh, what's that Vice City uh, Grizzly Smith. Uh, <laughs> 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 mm, that's some rough shit. shit. Yeah, man. but. <laughs> You know, like as far as like, you know, being pressured into things that you didn't want to do, you know, obviously we had the speaking out movement that occurred, you know, mid last year, you know, with a lot of stuff that was come out, you know, I'm assuming someone that was around that started in the time that you were in the business, you would have seen a lot of this sort of behavior, Um, you know, with it as well. Like back then, obviously a lot of people were turning a blind eye because they didn't want to lose bookings. You know. Oh yeah. Like but how did <laughs> I mean sorry, I, but, no, it's okay. Go ahead. No, no, I was just gonna say, but like, you know, looking back in that, you know, was that something that you saw rampant behavior in wrestling back at the time? Yes and no. Um because there were a lot of instances where I was treated like the boys. So you know, 
I drank with them and, you know, mm-hmm. yes, drugged you with them, <laughs> you know. So a lot of the times it wasn't directed at me. I wouldn't see it as much, though. Like, it was still hidden. Yeah. But... I was fortunate enough in being one of the boys that it didn't happen a lot directly towards me. Um, and if it did, I probably never even saw it. But, you know, there were instances of assaults. There were instances where an ex-boyfriend took his uh, aggression out on me in the ring for a spot. Shit. You know, lots of manipulation that I didn't know about too much later on in life. Like, me and my girlfriend, Noelle, discovered it together. But... You know, again, in being one of the boys, like that still was shielded away from me. Like I didn't know what they were doing when it came to other females. That they kept that quiet because I was always the one that was like, I don't give a fuck. So they knew probably if I had seen it, I'd have said something. Especially with yeah. the girls, because the big thing too back then was the rat thing. You know, so and so's a rat, and so and so's a rat, and I was never a big person to believe that. I was told so many times, oh, don't talk to her. She's a rat. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm still going <laughs> to talk to her. I'm still going to be her friend. I don't, unless she fucks me over somehow, I don't care. So yeah. they pretty much knew that if I saw something going on, I would be like, yeah. It's not but, on, yeah. So it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's a crazy thing. You know, I think a lot of, you know, it was hidden for many years and, and now you look at it and, and it's all come to light. And I think making wrestling a safer place uh, for people to sort of be a part of or trying to make it, you know, a, a safer environment. Yeah. But, um, you know, obviously you were, like, got partnered up with your husband, Damien, as well, and you were uh, by his side. How did you guys come to be, you know, working together? <laughs> Okay. It's still a sore spot for me, man. You got to bring that up. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. So uh, I can give you a short, I'll condense this down because um, we met, we crossed paths several times prior to meeting up again, but we didn't know it was one another because I had seen him at a USA Pro show that I was doing ring crew for. And I'm like, oh, he's cute. He never saw me. And then uh. he came to a show I was refing at, and he's like, oh, she's cute, but I bounced quick, so I didn't see him. And we met up again at another USA Pro show and talked, but didn't get each other's names, ring names, nothing. <laughs> so fast forward maybe a year, I think, later, like we came together at a JCW show and actually remembered each other, and we're like, holy shit, you're this person, and you're this person. So we finally got together. At first, like we tinkered with the idea of working with each other. Um, we weren't sure how it was going to work, though, because we wanted to keep our relationship as private as possible at that time. Sure. Uh, but it came to a point, too, where I left ECPW, my main school where I was working, and I wasn't working anywhere else. I wanted to work with the JCW where he was working. So I finally just said to the owner, Ricky, I'm like, look, next show, I'm managing Damien. That's it period. And he was uh, doing the goth look at the time, which fit well with me because I was goth in high school. Yeah, I'm like, that I could actually be the person I really am in real life now. So we made it work and started uh, started working together more so as we always said we were a duo as opposed to a manager and wrestler because I got in the ring and did more. Sh- I, was, I was the ECW chick in a sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get in there, get Paul driven and yeah. throwing around. And oh, the first show we, we worked together was fine. And everybody was like, okay, well, they're, they're working together. And that just happened to be the same fucking week where somebody outed you know, our, like, relationship and engagement on a message board. Mm. Fuck. They think we're just wow. together for this, so. See, that's the thing. Wrestling fans were so hardcore back then, like, with message boards and Ooh. shit. There's, like, any little bit of information was, like, gets leaked on a message board. Yeah, but it was a lot of wrestlers, like, ghostwriting the fucking message boards. Yep. Like, oh, 100%. Oh, yes. God, yes. Key, keyboard tough guys and shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was such a target, too. It was great. Really? Oh. Damien, was, Damien was a target, too. He used to get abused on the message boards. Oh, yeah. He, w- he was abused on the USA Pro Board the most, but, like, with the DOI, 
Ooh, they hated me. Oh, they hated me. Really? Oh, yeah. It's great. Like That means you did your job as a heel, though. Oh. No, no they were just a bunch of scumbags. It, it was more than just the job as a heel. Like, they got personal. Yeah. Like, the day after our first son was born, shit all over the message board about our son, and it's not my husband's, and blah, 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 blah. Aww. And at that point, we're like, we only told four people, so we know exactly which one it was that started all that shit. That's was rough. Nick? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's 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 unfortunate though. Like it, it's you know, but in a way, that's kind of the way that the wrestling business has been for for many years. You know, it's the snakes and rats. Mm-hmm. Not rats, is <laughs> <laughs> just to clear that up. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> wow. Yeah, but um, you know, now that you're you're actually starting to write a book about your time on the independent scene. And you know your your career as a wrestler. You know when the book's done, what can we expect from the book? There's two chapters on me. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it's. I try to describe it that it's about wrestling, but yet it's not about wrestling too, because mm. a lot of my real life ended up being shaped because of wrestling. Like again, because of wrestling. You know, I found my husband and I have the family that I have now and I have specific friends in my life. But also because of wrestling, you know, I discovered I had depression and never knew I had depression for so long. Because of wrestling, I was a seasoned alcoholic at like 19 years old. And, you know, because of wrestling, I discovered painkillers at 25, 26 and how that was a very slippery road. And so much of, again, wrestling and real life went hand in hand with each other. It's like, I can't escape either. And I can't tell one story without the rest of it being told. So writing it is basically, again, it's, it's, it's about wrestling, but yet it's not about wrestling. And I started it when the whole speaking out thing came out, not to be like, oh, this all happened to me, but because there's so much too during speaking out that i noticed how fans seem to glamorize the whole you know divas era and the golden era of wrestling during the attitude era you know and it's like yeah it was great but you you can't sit here and glamorize shit you really have no idea about Mm -hmm. so i'm it it's a whole it's a lot it's like trying to really put it in a box is difficult lately because it just goes all over the place yeah and you know you mentioned you know like alcohol and and you know pain medication would you say that you went through a, a pretty dark day of you know addiction yeah yeah i'd say so uh especially when i started mixing the two you know because i saw everyone else around me doing it and like, oh, they're fine, and they're safe, and they're alive. I'll be fine. Not realizing I, I probably could have, like, killed over a couple times. I had one whole night I still can't remember for the life of me. So, and the thing so, is, I wouldn't have, not, I, I wouldn't say I was, like, peer pressured into it, but it was one of those things where it was just around you, you yeah. know? Yeah, everyone was doing it. It was, like, just a couple of pills yeah. of beer. Yeah. Well, we we used to see it a lot. In the, just in the locker room, it was crazy. Like I, I told you the story about Pierce about one day uh, we're in the USA Pro locker room and I saw uh, one guy come in with a cooler and it was like some morphine lollipops and then yeah, him, yeah. him and his two buddies are just going to town on these morphine lollipops that he took from his job at a kid's hospital that I guess this is something they give kids children with cancer and they're just going to town wow. on it they're going to town on it and they're high as fuck and now I'm gonna tell you that. Two of these guys are dead and only one's alive. And if you see see this, you know who I'm talking about. Mm. That's crazy, man. That is absolutely nuts. And is it wrong that that sounds like a really fun way to get high, though? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's, like <laughs> it's like popping it, it, a freaking CBD gummy now. It's, it was yeah, like, I they're mean, like, they look like popsicles, actually. It is crazy. 
Yeah, it is. But how how long did your you know addiction last? Like, how long did you go through that period? And what was the the thing that really made you snap out of it? Um, the drink, the heavily drinking that was on and off since about eighteen, and mm. that the heavy drinking stopped when the painkillers stopped. Um, now the painkiller thing that was like a gradual thing. It was one of those things where it was like, I'm going to have one after the show to take all the edge off from all the anxiety that I had and all the bullshit that I was going through. And luckily the shows are only like once a month. So it wasn't that big of a deal until, yeah. you know, they're like, Hey, you know, we know you have this, these issues. So here, take a few for when you're not here. So, you know, you had more and then it becomes one of those things where you take it before the show. Because you need to take take the extra edge off before the show, and then you take it again after the show. And I had this thing where I wouldn't drink if I knew I was going to take like a Xanax or a Percocet. But shit was really going down in general general life around me, so I just basically said, "Fuck it," and it was bad. It, it hit its worst for a matter of like maybe two months. And I pretty much just ended it on my own after the blackout night because I, again, I still can't remember most of the blackout night. And it was like, I don't want to not remember what happens. Yeah. So I just was like, fuck it. I'm done. And what really helped was not working for the company anymore also. So yeah, being not being away, around it. Yeah. Being away from those people and the environment really helps greatly <laughs> yeah i mean blacking blacking out is some scary shit not remembering and, and i suppose especially for a woman um you know around any sort of yeah. you know situation it'd be terrifying so it, it sounds like it was kind of like that sort of grow up moment for you to go fuck that like no i can't mm -hmm. keep doing this shit yeah exactly you know but you know, it, you know, so you've been out of removed from wrestling for a while now. Do you ever still miss it and, and wish to you could sort of, sort of get back in there and do your thing? Um, I miss the spirit of it, but I don't miss it, if that makes sense. Yeah, like if I had the opportunity to do like a one shot show with a bunch of people that I like that I wouldn't see again. And yeah, I, I would do it in a heartbeat. But if like some random place called me up and asked me, Hey, we need a manager. I probably wouldn't. And I guess it's a comfort zone type of thing. I don't want to really get out of, but in the same right, it's like, yeah, none of it is what it was. Drugs and drinking aside, a lot of companies that I worked with back then had family vibes too, you know, like yeah. Boogie, you know, and whatever you see, like WC, it was, yeah. it was a family. Like it didn't matter what was, was going awesome. on. Yeah. It was yeah the, like, the best, I, to me, it was like probably the best place to work. And like we would go out afterwards, right? Me and you split them two furs at Ruby Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> Long Island Ice Teas, two mm -hmm. for one. Hey, you get one, I get one. Yep. Yeah. Like there was always just a family vibe, you know, everyone, for the most part, got along. And if we didn't, we wouldn't have known any any wiser, you know? I mean, even back when Damien and I started with a company called JCW, in the very beginning, it was very family-based. And that's what's missing from locker rooms these days. And I don't, I wouldn't want to just go to a show and just be odd girl out with a click over yeah. there and a click over there. It's like, it wouldn't be the same. Yeah, I mean, different times in, in wrestling as well, and different uh, environments. But you know, I think, I, I think overall, you know, wrestling ha has definitely changed in a lot of ways. You know, where I am, you know, wrestling now is very much it, it comes across like everyone is on the same team and wanting to make the product better, as opposed to getting individuals over. Mm -hmm. um, you know, had you ever seen, you know, obviously in your time there, like people were refusing to work with, like people or women come in saying, no, I don't want to work with Foxy or, you know, have you seen any sort of political sort of stuff that, on that indie level back in the day? Kind of, sort of. It was never that people didn't want to work with me. They always thought I didn't want to work with them. 
which was stupid. Absolutely yeah. stupid. Um, there were instances where I would have to have matches and for some strange reason, again, the girls just felt I didn't want to work them and I could really give a shit. Again, this was during the time where message boards were rampant. Yeah. Anything you read on a message board, if you didn't know better, you thought was true. So, you know, yeah. Foxy on her high horse. Yeah. Foxy's a bitch. Foxy got ego. Foxy don't want to put over her. I'm like, whatever. And, you know, the girls, the girls would work with me, no problem. But it, it did get to a point once where me and uh, New Jersey indie wrestler Alicia, we had gotten into it in the ring because she had heard things from like, outside sources saying that you know i could carry her and all this other shit and i'm like like after the match like we we beat each other in the ring like we were just yeah. beating each other and everything and after the match I'm like, what the fuck dude she's like well you know i heard you said this and i heard you said that i'm like when you ask say something before we go out there you know i know because i'm and giving I, you, i'm giving you my body and i'm trusting you with my body yeah when you like confront me first that way we could mm -hmm. You know, instead of just taking liberties with me. Was Alicia, is she, was she the one that was with Chris Hero for a while? No, she was a homicide. I don't think so. No, like, she, yeah, I wasn't sure she came to the room with Chris Hero, yeah. But the funniest part about that whole story is what she had heard I said, I did say, but not about her. Because mm. I was supposed to work um, a girlfriend of mine who had just, like, got her feet into training and didn't know much. And they were putting me in the ring with her as like a filler match. So yes, I said, yeah, I can carry her. I will carry her. I got it. Don't worry about it. And then they flipped my opponent to Alicia, like maybe a week after. So she had thought everything I said about my girlfriend, I said about her and I told her and she's like, oh, I'm like, oh. So all of that was for basically nothing where you guys literally shoot each other, yeah. on each other in the ring. For uh -huh. The fans got those show. They did. They absolutely <laughs> did. They're like, wow, this looks like a real fight. This looks legit. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, but I don't think, I don't think there's anything I, anyone I personally didn't want to work with. I was willing to work with anyone. Yeah. Hell, I even worked with Missy Hyatt, you know? <laughs> sort of. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, absolutely. But still, that's a, that's a sort of a, a decent feather in the cap. Like Missy's, you know, you know, pretty well known in the world of wrestling. You know, in you know, goes back decades. So, yeah. you know, for for some interesting things she's known for, but also, you know, obviously her her stellar career. Yeah, Foxy, cool. Foxy, did you work the USA Pro Show at the beach where she passed out at the beach? No, her, her and Sunny because they got so high. They passed out and busted their knees open. They fell. Yeah, they, they were so freaking high, her and Sonny, at that damn show. No, I wasn't. I only did, like, I only worked two USA Pro shows and did Ring Crew for one. Oh, so. okay. Yeah. Which is a one. blessing and a curse, I guess you could say. Yeah. <laughs> So Foxy, <laughs> so Foxy Boogaloo was telling me that uh, you actually uh, are a pretty good singer and uh, would write your own music. <laughs> and uh, back back in the day, like some some of our listeners and viewers may remember uh, the song "Call Me Maybe." <laughs> and uh, and I heard heard you did a wrestling parody to that song. And uh, if you would. Uh, Grace us with a performance. I know that our listeners and me and Boogie would be uh, absolutely pleasured to hear it. Uh, I don't remember all of the words. I don't remember all the words. Can you give us a little, like, a te um, teaser of it? Yeah. <laughs> there, there was one part, because it, it went on about being at an indie show for content. Yeah. Here we go. It was talking about being at an indie show and your opponent thinks they're like Superman. Right? Yeah, yeah. So the next line would go, they all think they're Cena, but they've never seen a spot as simple as hip toss arm drag. What was it? Hip toss arm drag something powder? 
I forgot what it was. It was like a simple, like a simple technical wrestling thing that everyone always does. Hip toss, uh, arm drag, drop down, powder. <laughs> you, you know what? I think I've I've just found it here. So let me uh, let me just bring it into the stream real quick. Yeah, and awesome. uh, and, and we'll, yeah, we'll, oh, we'll yeah. check it out. So. David says it's on YouTube. It is. I had to do a disclaimer before I even posted it because this was when I was still fresh out of wrestling. I'm like, I don't want anyone to think I'm doing it for bookings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Here it goes. All right. Let's do it. All right. Hey, guys. Can you oh, hear it? A little shaky right yeah. now. Yeah. I am going to do my Call Me Maybe parody about wrestling. But here's a disclaimer first. Um, number one. I'm doing this karaoke style. I have it queued up on YouTube on the Xbox right now. So if I'm looking at the paper and looking at the TV, that's why. But hopefully you guys don't have to be seeing me. Uh, number two, this was a challenge. Maybe challenge me to do it. Hey, put this on YouTube. Here I am. Okay. Three, um, this is not written about anybody of you. And since, um, guys, I'm nervous. I don't sing in okay, front of anybody. I have to have a drink before doing karaoke. I've been with Damien Dragon for 10 years and I still can't sing in front of him. He's sitting right there and I'm nervous as all freaking hell doing this. And this is my second date. Okay. Real quick. Here is the original when I wrote it. That way you guys know. Your intentions are so good. Your scribbles and everything. And what I'm going to be holding up to read is the new revamped version. Nice clear print so that I don't stumble over my work. Either book me maybe or call me book me. You guys can pick whichever one you like best. Cue it up. Here we go. <laughs> I like the little dance move. Another long Saturday of driving out of my way to work this show for no pay in front of five pay fans. This pick kicked up seven times <laughs> after a suicide dive. DDT and Northern Lights. He must be Superman. They all think they've seen her, but they've never seen a worker calling spots like hip toss on the copper powder, hey Vince or Dixie, or Ring of Honor. I'm done with shit shows, so book me maybe. NYWC, y'all got my number, so call me, book me, NWA, restore honor, with territories, and call me, book me, a European door, a tour in Japan, or Lucha Libre, book me, maybe. <laughs> That is awesome. That's that is amazing. I, I pop every time I see that. <laughs> Dude, that 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 is amazing. That is amazing. I love I love the beginning, the little shoulder <laughs> dance that you were doing as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh, that man. was like. <laughs> that was absolutely amazing. But uh, look, it is time for uh, our, our game of the show that we play with all of our international guests, which is Guess the Australian Slang. Foxy, have you ever been to Australia? I want to because, like, the, the females that come out of Australia are fucking gorgeous. And it's a beautiful, hey. beautiful place. But you know, <laughs> fighters. We have, so we have hot chicks. You guys do. It's disturbing. Every time, like, me and Damien are watching some kind of, like, movie or yeah. a new, like, band or musician comes out or even a female wrestler and then they talk, we're like, of course they're fucking Australian. Like, uh, it's just gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, I am Australian, but I'm sort of the ugly duckling in Australia. So, yeah. The balls are uh, beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Well, there you go, man. The self-proclaimed, <laughs> but it still works. But uh, how this is going to work, uh, Foxy, I'm going to give you an Australian slang word. Uh, I'll put in a sentence and you've got to tell me what it means. Okay. Okay. So first one we're going to start with is bludger. Far out, man. That boogaloo can be a fucking bludger at times. Um, bludger. Bludger. I'm going to go with asshole. No, it's, I'd say someone who's lazy, who's just like, oh, just man. Fuck it, I'm going to take a break. Like, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? Someone who starts a job, but it's like, yeah, fuck this. I'm, let's time for a break. Let's have a, let's chill. <laughs> so, but right. it's something that Boogaloo isn't. So, okay. okay ne good. Next one is, <laughs> hey guys, do you want to come over to my ha house and have some brekkie? Brekkie. Brekkie. 
All right, it would be way too obvious for it to be breakfast. So I'm going to go with beer. You would have been right if you said, yeah, breakfast. Oh. So brekkie is short for breakfast. That just sounded too simple. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're, we're simple people. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> next is piss. Hey, guys, want to come to my house and drink some piss? There you go. That has to be beer, error, or ale. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any, any type of alcohol. It's funny. I've got friends that are American and, and, and from overseas. So, yeah, come over to my house. We get on the piss, and they're like, no, thank you. No, <laughs> I'm good. Oh my God, man. Yeah, it, it, it refers to an amber-colored foamy liquid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next is budgie smugglers. Oh, shit. My dad came over to my house, and he's at my pool. He's wearing his budgie smugglers again. Speedos? Doom, you're on fire. You got it. Okay, this is next. so weird. <laughs> it's, yeah, it, it is pretty weird. Next is Bicky. Do you want a Bicky? Uh, um. <laughs> you like a bicky? Try to figure out the context. Uh, cigarette. Uh, no. So, uh, bicky is like a biscuit or a cookie. All right. So we got a couple more here. So, <clears throat> oh fuck, the coppers are out today. Coppers. Cops. Yes, correct. Policemen. Cops. Okay. Cops. All right. Yeah, next is. All right, next is dead set. Are you fucking dead set, mate? Serious. Yeah, like, are you are you serious right now? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Jersey people use that, or maybe just me. Okay, fair enough. How about this one? Galar. Angel can be a dead set galar. I don't want to say what I think it is because Angel might knock on my door and like pop me one. <laughs> it means not someone who's being very bright or a person who's a little bit stupid. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. So, all right. So, we got another one. <clears throat> hey, you want to try some of me, Goon? Goon. I can't. Y'all are on a different like linguistics level. <laughs> Goon is like a bo uh, it's a basically a cask of wine, like a, a box of wine. So oh. a box of a box wine. Of wine. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we do some classic. <laughs> that's what, shit that's what you know you're officially like, yeah. I'm gonna have a drinking problem because I'm drinking wine out of the box. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> hey, I was at the nightclub the other night and I saw a low rider there. And uh, he was having a bit of a pash on the dance floor. Shit. Pash. Pash. Uh, seizure? <laughs> no, a, 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 a pash on, on the dance floor is kind of like a sloppy makeout session. Oh, it's gosh. like when, yeah, like you see someone who's like two people that are just completely fucking drunk and stuff like that, just trying to like lick each other's faces off. That's oh, pretty much bangers. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. Hey, do you guys feel like a sausage sanger? Sausage sanger. Sandwich? Yeah, but what kind of sandwich? Sausage. You got it. There you <laughs> <laughs> sausage sandwich. Uh, All right, we've got, we got a couple more that we'll go through here. Okay. Hey, can you grab me sunnies on your way out the door? Sunglasses. Sunnies. Yep. Okay. No worries. Jeez, I've got to get harder at this. Hey, see me, mate, over there? He's fucking true blue. True blue. Honest? Uh, no, it means like you can't get any more Australian than that. Oh, All right. So this is the last one. <clears throat> bogan. Me Uncle Daryl's a real fucking bogan. Her. Uh, no, so a bogan is kind of like an Australian redneck. So, how a bogan would speak would be like, Fucking get a love here, go on, you want to go down the local pub, we'll have a couple of skewies, maybe we'll have a chicken schnitty, and uh, we'll see where the night takes us. Maybe we'll uh, 
you know, have a few more skinnies back at my joint if you're up for it, love, eh? That's how a bogan would talk. <laughs> the whole idea of an Australian redneck right now is blowing my mind. <laughs> <laughs> that that's exactly <laughs> what we got here <laughs> but uh foxy where can everyone find you where can everyone support you uh and what do you got going on at the moment you still got the book club because remember we had that Anne rice book club <laughs> the dirty Anne rice books yes all right um if anybody wants to get extra content for my wrestling memoir you guys can go check out patreon.com slash foxy foxy that's f-o-x-y f-o-x-x-y uh on there are a bunch of uh deleted scenes that i've written out uh that didn't make it into the book as well as me watching and reacting to all of my old ass wrestling footage which is horrendous and hysterical all at once um other than that, you guys can follow me all on social media at Viva Foxy Foxy. That's V I V A F O X Y F O X X Y on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, same handle everywhere. Uh, as far as things I got going on now, I am a part of two separate podcasts on twitch.com slash danlaw83. Every last Wednesday of the month, Damien and myself uh, co-host Nerd Herders Rebooted, which is all about you know nerd pop culture, movies, etc. And we, I also do a music Twitch stream called Manic Mixtape, where me and my buddy Dan shoot the shit about anything music related. Uh, the next episode is next Saturday, I believe, and we're going to be doing an entire Ozzy Osbourne episode, nice. like discographies, moments, songs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We kind of go all over the place with it because we're just super crazy when it comes to like anything music based and that's all of my stuff <laughs> well you know what there's a lot going on there guys make sure you head out there uh definitely follow foxy she's doing some amazing work and definitely doing a lot of cool shit so make sure you get out there support her here on the mwa podcast network we got shit dropping every single week ladies and gentlemen we got shows like my show watching now shooting the shit uncensored where i interview people from the around the world involved in this wonderful world of professional wrestling you've also got killing the business with former ecw original the kingpin angel motherfucking medina available every friday at 8 p.m usa eastern which is saturday 10 a.m australian time we got nights of the gimmick table with your boy boogaloo and lowrider every sunday 9 p.m usa eastern which is 11 a.m monday australian time make sure you check out those great shows but i also cannot forget get funked with our boy alan kiwi funk which airs every single thursday at 7 p.m usa eastern and uh you can catch all those shows on twitch.tv slash mwa world on uh youtube multi-continental wrestling or the mwa podcast network so check those out Huge shout out to our sponsors, healthvape.com and also sleeps.com for helping us keep the lights on up in this bitch and supporting such an amazing product like the MWA uh, podcast network. But uh, Foxy, thank you so much for being on. It's been an absolute pleasure. You're you're an absolute delight to have on and I'd love to have you back on again. And I'm sure that we're going to see you on Nights at the Gimmick Table oh, yeah, uh, very soon oh, as well. So I think I was uncensored here. If I get on that show, woo! Hey. <laughs> well that's it you know we want we, everyone we, to, we, we to, can rekindle to, our metal magic <laughs> run hey away. man I, I, hey hey boogaloo i've seen damien he looks like a scary dude bro i reckon he'd, he'd, oh. he'd kick your ass so <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a teddy bear <laughs> <laughs> but on that note guys thank you for tuning in it's been an absolute pleasure foxy thank you again thank and you. uh guys we'll catch you soon till next foxy, time love you love you too Bye. peace